Alright, how y'all doing? Uh, we're the Benji Davis Project from Baton Rouge. Thanks for having us out. Uh, this was called Somebody Else. Just winging it out here. Thank you. 
that's how long you guys have been together? Actually, uh, come on three now. Three. Tell me a little bit about how it, how it came together, if you don't mind. Um, more or less, um, I started playing when I was about 12. I guess, should I answer to you or should I just address? Whatever you feel bad. Right, I well, thought you would address. All right, cool. <laughs> uh, I started playing about, about 10 years ago, I guess, and um, I met Mick uh, getting drunk in a Brett Park. And he, he was pretty much just playing in the back uh, of the guitar. That's Did you say the, getting drunk at breakfast? No, uh, at a Brett Park. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but um, yeah. alcoholics. Basically, that spiraled into let's make a band, and um, and I had an older brother that it was you know playing and you know and and uh, singing in a choir. So basically, I kind of got a couple of his friends that were in the choir that were a little, I guess you could say, better than him. <laughs> and uh, that's where Anthony and Michael and Pandora came from. And then uh, a few guitarists later, we got Tubes, John, thanks John, we call him Tubes. And then uh, Brad, also a friend of a friend, Michael's roommate, whenever we, you said, just weird, weird You're thing. all from Baton Rouge. Yeah. Yes, we are. Is that important to your sound? I mean, it's, it's. I guess so. Uh, I don't think I've, we're aware of I've written some pretty blatant <laughs> songs about that. Uh, well, I just think of, I think of bands that, that kind of come from a, from a place, you know, be it. R.E.M. Right. or U2 or you know some of these it, it seems like they reflect the place and while what music I've heard from the website and then you guys playing here it's not southern exactly but there's there's a sense of place in it to my ears at least oh right yeah, yeah. I mean I was you know I was raised by a you know family from down south so I obviously got that I mean I'm sure a lot of y'all do too but uh, I guess for better or for worse it's, it's in me you yeah. know can't really help it. So, I mean, when I'm writing songs, I'm not thinking like I need to write a southern sounding song. It might just have essences of that. Right. So, what were kind of in these two going on three years, what were kind of the, the pivotal moments that have led you to kind of achieve the amount of success that you've had so early on? Um, I know Jazz I know Fest was a big one. Jazz Fest was a big one. I think, I think most of the, uh, most of the pivotal moments occurred within, within the six of us, you know. How so? Um, well, like when you when you're playing and things aren't making sense, and all of a sudden, you know, a song will come about that will, you know, either shift what, you know, the way you look at things or sort of lift you up to a you know, higher level as far as working with these, you know, these particular people. Right. Um, I think basically, I can name some songs that when we rehearsed and worked them out, that that was more of a turning point than you know any show we played or anything like that. I think learning to deal with each other on the road, like just our relationships and how we all play off each other and just you know, learn to get along with each other has been, uh, been probably the biggest struggle. You have a van? Yeah, we have a van and trailer, the shop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you got, you got, we got six of you guys in, <laughs> six of you guys in. Some of got in there. <laughs> six of you all in the van, right? And uh, gets, gets, you're on the, I looked, I printed out your tour schedule. You're, you're, it's a lot of weekend type stuff, guerrilla southeast. But yeah, yeah, we just, we just got all the way a month to orbit. Gorilla. Gorilla is yeah. the right word. Yeah, yeah. Well, it feels like it's a Well, I mean, I think that that's, you know, I know you guys have a booking agent. I know Mike, mm -hmm. uh, actually, from Concerted Efforts, and okay. you're lucky to be, I think he's a great guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah How did that come about? How did you get a... Uh, uh, I don't know if you're a manager somewhere. Yeah, he's yeah. somewhere around here. But he, uh, he basically, <laughs> he hooked us up with them. Batman. Okay. Batman. Jim, Jim Bateman. He's a good guy. All right, so it went it went management and then agent. So how, how did management come about? And the reason I ask some of these questions is because um, I, I think that there are a lot of students in the audience here who would love to get to where you guys are, you know, and they're, they may be musicians curious about or, uh, musicians and, and or people that might want to work with musicians and kind of try cool. and figure out the path that, that you guys took. Well, uh, Jim, Jim, his uh, whole scheme was he uh, he sat around in a, in a uh, in the recording studio we, that we worked in. So you Didn't worked say, in a recording studio. Yeah, yeah, we were yeah. we were making a CD and uh, he basically sat there and it was like, who is that weird guy staring at us? And he kept coming back, and coming back, and coming back, and eventually, you know, by the end, he was like, you know, I'd like to manage y'all. You know, so. And what what if you don't mind me asking? I mean, how did that how did that strike you guys? How does you know how did you guys say? What, what led you to say, okay, you know? He was the only one. <laughs> we didn't have any other options. <laughs> yeah. didn't have any other good options yet. Yeah. Right. And, uh, 
I mean, I guess he's a, you know, he's he's a good guy. You know, right. I, I think if you're if you're looking for someone that's gonna that you're gonna trust, you don't look for you know Mr. Business. So no. you know you look for. Uh, Although he is Mr. Business. <laughs> <laughs> so sure. Just look, just look at him. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, well, also at the time he was uh, managing Chris Thomas King and then Gabe Mouth Brown, yeah. Clarence Gabe Mouth Brown. So he had I mean, how could you go yeah. wrong? You know, and he had some credentials. So what were your expectations? You know, you get a manager. A lot of bands. Really I, feel like they. I had to sort of. It had to sort of be explained to us what necessarily a manager did. I don't think we still. I think we're still trying to figure. Out. <laughs> but uh, I guess I guess we just thought that. You know, at, at the time, you know, we were, you know, three or four years younger, and mm -hmm. I thought we were just signed excited. In a year. That's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was like you get a manager and then you get signed. Well, I think a lot not of people, how it works. I think a lot of people do think that, and that, that's not how it's worked out for you guys. Although I imagine you've had offers from record labels by this point. <laughs> we've had uh, we, we've yeah. had some, we've some turned down down players. I'm sorry. We, we, we've been turned down more than we've been um, accepted. All right. But you've managed to really? get, get two <laughs> records and an EP out at this point. Yeah. I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> yeah, we we put we found a way to put out the albums on our own. Yeah, always the bridesmaid, I guess. Well, not, I don't think for long, frankly. And <laughs> oh, so, um, yeah. I'm still waiting. How has how has it been putting out the record, self-releasing stuff? It's been great. Yeah. How so? Um, pretty much, we don't have you know someone from a record label calling us every day and saying, are you you know making sure we're doing this and calling other people that we don't know they're calling and saying you know are they doing this right and are they doing this. So uh, I guess sort of like a parent, you know, a record label while you're making an album, mm -hmm. I guess could be like a parent. Yes, they can, yeah. Um, so I guess, I guess we're grown-ups and yeah. we're trying to get back into, you know, having parents. How about the finances of it? I mean, how, how do you manage to finance your recordings? Uh, 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 private investors yes. <laughs> uh, that may or may not make... <laughs> well, that's, but, that's uh, why yeah, but I mean, yeah, the fact that they that they have the faith in us to do so. I think I think if we would have gotten signed before we recorded this last album, the Angie House, like when we did when we did more of the local, it was like we did it in two or three days, and mm -hmm. it wasn't even a really a band effort because that was before the band had really been solidified. Like John wasn't even in the band, right. so um, the more I mean, Angie House was the first time we've actually got to produce and spend time recording an album, and it was a huge growing process. Like, yeah. if we would have been picked up, we'd have just been puppets. I mean, we, yeah. we didn't know enough, and we, we weren't confident enough, and we hadn't grown up enough to be able to, I think, assert ourselves against the label, so it would have been whatever the label wanted. So now I think we've figured out a little bit more who we are, right. and it would be better. So. And you mentioned you've got distribution through Selecto Hits. Mm -hmm. um, but is it safe to say that the majority of your sales come from sales on, uh, off the stage at shows? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we have a distribution deal, but that doesn't mean that anybody, you know, in Oregon. Yeah, Oregon knows who we are. So it's that? like our right. CD's right. there, but right. yeah, I mean, good for it. So how, how, do you, how do you kind of market yourselves? How do you promote yourself? Tour. Tour. MySpace. My, really? <laughs> MySpace. I mean, that's kind of a new thing everybody's into. MySpace yeah. helps. Yeah. It does help. Um, so, the, so the live show, the, the Getting in the in the van with Definitely. the trailer is, is where it's at, kind of. Mm -hmm. right. Let me turn to some questions here from the audience that uh, people have. If not, we'll listen to another song. Yeah, Dave. Right. Well, the thing is, uh, whenever whenever we all got together, uh, I was you know I was obviously bands like you know. John Mayer and people like that, like obviously he's making all the money and his drummers, you know, making nothing, you know. So uh, I guess, you know, like, because a few of these guys were in, like, in college on the way to these, you know, awesome, you know, degrees and stuff like that. So pretty much to make it fair for everybody, uh, I did, you know, what my lawyers told me not to do and pretty much said, you know, as far as road goes, as far as the money we make goes, that's going six ways, you know. Um, and then basically taking the risk of, you know, I hope I aspire to make money off royalties. So if that happens, I'll be good, you know, and I will be making more money than them and they'll be hounding me about it. Uh, but you'll just be buying our drinks. <laughs> yeah. I'll, and that's fine with me, you know, but I think, I think if I was treating all them less, you know, like they were less important than me, you know, why are all six of us getting in the van every day? You yeah, we probably would have dropped out of school if we'd have been like, you're going to get $25 every show. And like, 
It's probably more than we actually get. Yeah. That's probably a higher percentage than we actually get. Yeah. <laughs> We'd probably be better off. Yeah, yeah. 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 But so on, the, uh, so on the live performance, on the merch and all that stuff, you, you, uh, CD sales, yeah, you split it. Right. Well, merch, merch more goes to back more to merch. merch. Yeah. I'm sorry, it goes back to make more merch. Right. right. But on songwriting, you're, you're the chief songwriter, so on all the, I write, the yeah, copyright. Uh, yeah, I write, I've written all the songs um, you know, on a skeleton level, um, except one uh, that we might play a little later. Yeah. Not sure. Okay. Other questions so far? Yes? Um, actually, our first tour, I think we might have scared some people off. Uh, we weren't, we weren't. <laughs> the fan base shrank after yeah. the first tour. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, whoever was there, uh, we, we, basically, it comes from, you know, I know, like, we're not, we're not PR people, but it's sort of your job, if you don't have, like, a PR person or a road person, uh, to sort of be the, the nice guy to, you know, go out there and say hey to everybody and, Basically, I mean, internet helps a lot. I think mainly what we've done is through through touring, you know, live shows and stuff like that, and concentrating on a on an area instead of just shooting out all over the place and not coming I would back. Say, yeah, I would say like if you keep going back to you know a certain <laughs> club or something like that, people more people are going to come because they'll recognize your music and stuff like that. What we made the mistake of first is our first tour. We went up to the Northeast and. A, no one heard of us, and B, we weren't going to be coming back for another year and a half. So, we gone back uh, you know, your fans aren't going to, no one's going to come back because they'll either forget or, you know, because it's been so long. So I, I think focusing on one area, you know, the same clubs over and over and over again is definitely the way. Yeah, the I way think you do I, I noticed that looking at your, at your touring schedule and, and the press. I mean, it's so smart and it's almost counterintuitive. You feel like today, oh, you got to do these national tours, whereas regional tours seem like something from the past. And it's it's not true. What you have to do now is build those little pockets of fans, and you right, guys are you kind of got to go out, out in the concentric circles, concentric so overlapping well, concentric yeah, circles. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, you, you right. start from here and you just build right. out. Uh, I mean, unless, right. unless 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 you have a deal, you know, well, if, unless unless you have a deal, you need to play there, you know, because yeah. we'll play somewhere, you know, we'll we'll play say like Shreveport, right. and we'll have 100 people there. We'll drive an hour. And have 600 people there, and it's like this little gap. Like, mm -hmm. just we haven't gotten across the gap yet. You know, it's like you basically have to plant seed everywhere you, you go. You keep doing it, and eventually right. the, those gaps start to overlap. How do you, do you, when you go into these markets, do you do any? You know, do you advance the gigs in some way with with press or radio? I think or the management does that. Management we we does just that. got a we just got a promoter. Uh, is that what it is? A publicist. 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 Okay. Uh, <laughs> and he's he's you know he. He's in agreement, pretty much. Uh, he's he's basically pushing our live shows for us. How did that happen? Was that through management? Got you. Yeah. Well, initially we went. Yeah, uh, with this new CD, um, I guess I guess uh, they considered it better product, um, you know, or more pushable than our, our last CD because you know we got to spend more time on it. And it was more radio friendly, as you know, also as far as just you know, no clicks, no. Right. You know, sure. Um, so Mark Pucci, uh, I don't remember where he's from, but. Uh, Atlanta, I think. Atlanta, uh, but he was, we got him, and he was a little, he was a little too big for yeah. us, you know. Right. Uh, so we, I guess downgraded, but not really downgraded. We Specialized. Sort of, right, yeah. right. We we uh, we're with another guy now, and he's more focused on a region and a, you know live shows and stuff. I think one thing we did to, like, spread our fan base, or two things actually. One thing was like, it sounds kind of cheesy but like we had a, a big high school fan base and those high schoolers I mean at first we shunned it you know because we we're like you know we don't want to be a teeny rapper band they get <laughs> older the, they get older and they go off to colleges across the country and it ends yeah. up it has ended up being a <laughs> huge boost for us in our fan base yeah. and then also something we do now which I wish we'd have done since we started touring but it took us three years to figure out <laughs> how to do it or to figure out come up with the idea but uh we'll burn like a demo of like four or five of our CDs we'll burn like 100 or 200 of them, and we'll go. If we play a college town, we'll just go on campus and we'll hand out. Hand them out. And it, I mean, it seems to really be working so far. I mean, uh, this is called Wait. It's about reincarnation. I'm not fully sure, but I do.
you guys are great. You know, it's, I mean, just so it's so nice to hear people that play well together. I mean, you're an amazing guitar player playing rhythm guitar, and you know, all, all of you guys are great. And I just, it's it's wonderful to hear it. And, and you know, I also want to give a shout out to the the guys that put the sound together for this because this is not easy to put all this together. And thank, I think you, guys. Yeah, thank you, voice guys. Thank you. Well, look, it's, I, I would much rather have you guys listen to you play than, than listen to you talk, no offense. Um, but uh, <laughs> I'd like to wrap up with just a couple more questions. Um, uh, what, what's the biggest challenge? You know, what, what, what's the hardest thing that, to overcome and that you overcome with um, looking forward to overcoming? I don't know if everybody agrees with me because we tried probably not to talk about the challenges of it. Okay. Um, yeah. I would say when we get back in town and there's – we're not working, you know? Right. And I mean, I mean, obviously, like the whole girlfriend thing, and, you know, they freak out. And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I, I guess the main thing would be, you know, we, you want to sort of rush things. You know, sure. you want to you go straight to where everybody else is, where they're like making money and, you know, doing all this fun stuff, touring with, you know, the bands that you want to be touring with. And I guess, I guess one of the hardest things is, Probably, and if anybody else in this room is in, you know, in bands and stuff, is probably having to having to watch other people. You know, you feel like I could be doing that, but you're not. And I guess, I guess the hardest part isn't um, isn't you know the work that you put into it. It's it's the you know I guess you want to you want to get credit for it. You know what I mean? So um, I guess the hardest part for me, and I know you know a few other people, it's not the fact that we're not making money. It's the fact. They were not making money for a reason, you know, uh, and that is that we need, you know, we need to take it the next step. And no matter how many steps you take, There's I'm sure no matter how huge you get, you still, you know, you still have to deal with people like, like, I mean, I, I know I'm like, trust me, I'm not, I'm not comparing myself in the least, but like, as a musician, you always have people like, like, say, I mean, Mozart, you know, or someone like that. It's like, I will never, I will never reach that, you know? I guess I guess your drive as a musician is to get, is is to be the best. That's for sure it is. Yeah. So well, why why do it if, if you right. don't have that as a drive? Right. So it's sort of like, you know, what what can I do? Like, why? You know. But look, I mean, I, I've had a little bit of experience in this world. You're doing it, okay? And I think I mean you convinced me, and I think you've convinced everyone in this room, right? Absolutely. And then, you know, not, it's, it's a matter of time. I'll talk to you. After I think, class. Yeah. I think but, the hardest part. What well, I was going to please the hardest part for me is, you know, it's. The thing about you know what we do is it's full it's like it's like waves you'll be on this huge like <laughs> it's a you know, upper you know you're like this is going to be awesome you know we're going to play for so and so you know this label or something like that and then you get this you know sorry and yeah. it's like where what are we going to do now it's like you know and you feel like you're not going to go anywhere and then and then you know you're you're hitting bottom and then it's like you, you, you get another like you know like it, it we'll play jazz fest this year and then it's like oh sweet that's awesome you know and then uh, you play, and then it's over. And then, and then it's like, what, what now? You know. And well, then, there's a reason why there's so many musicians who are, are drug addicts and alcoholics because it's it is. <laughs> yeah. I'm not joking. Yeah. I mean, it is this series of highs and lows. So you take the drugs and you drink to kind of level yeah. it out. And it's very. In a glass box of emotion. Remember that. No, it's not. It's not advice. You know. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but speaking of advice. What, what advice do you have for, for, for all of these, these students? Um, are all, are all, I guess, show of hands, are all more business music or are all... How many of you are musicians out there? Okay, uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, I guess keep playing your instruments. And, uh, <laughs> and I think my advice, if you're forming a band, no more than two members. Because <laughs> you, you can make twice as money as we will ever make. <laughs> I'm being dead serious. You're referring to my mistake, Mike. I mean, no, but I'm saying, like, you got to get more hotel rooms, you got to get more food, you got to get more, a bigger van, you got to get more equipment. You gotta get, I mean, yeah. uh, the money disappears with six people. So it's the White Stripes advice. Right? Yeah, I'm, yeah, those guys, we could be as big as White Stripes, and each day we'll make three times as much as I will ever make. You know what I mean? So it's. That's, that's his problem. I, I, <laughs> no, it's, I, I'm saying from the business side, you know. No, but I have fun with five people. No matter, I do too. No matter what, we always have a crowd with us. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, listen, are there any, any questions from you all before we uh, hear some more music?
The last ones? Okay. Um, I'm going to shut up. Uh, I don't know what how we are on time, but um, I think three songs would be fantastic if, if that's right. not too much to ask. Thank you all so much. Oh, thank you, Alan. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I just called my ear and uh, I didn't go to college, but I heard about this volcano called Aeronaut. And it was just, uh, it dawned on me like, uh, why, why are people living next to a volcano? It's active. And uh, so it's just sort of a, uh, it's a metaphor towards losing your temper, but it's, uh, it's both of
I guess uh, this one's about uh, the music business. It's, uh, it's called Clowns. <laughs> it refers to uh, A&R people. For all you, for all you A&R people out there. <laughs>
Cause it's all about it's true.